ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him we seek refuge in him from the evil within our own selves and from the evil consequences of our actions verily the most truthful speech is the book of Allah the Quran and the best of guidance after that is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst things in our religion are those things that we invent in the religious affairs for they lead us straight and into the hellfire my brothers and sisters we want to continue today the theme of our khutbah from last week which was a very important theme on the topic of time on the topic of time and what islam has to do has to say about this very important blessing that we all enjoy but we just can't seem to get enough of which is our time the time that we have in front of us and today's khutbah we're going to look at a little look at it from a more practical perspective and offer some solutions to being more productive and to take advantage of time and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to utilize our time in more productive ways Anas ibn Malik and Abu Huraira two companions they relate from the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam in a hadith that's related in the musnad of Imam Ahmad it's a hadith that's similar to the narration we related last week which contains a prediction of the Prophet the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam he said la taqumu sa'a hatta yataqarab az-zaman wa takun as-sana كالشهر والشهر كالجمعة وتكون الجمعة كاليوم ويكون اليوم كالساعة وتكون الساعة كالدرمة بالنار The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he said لا تقوم الساعة the hour will not be established until حتى يتقارب الزمان until time begins to pass very quickly Again he said the hour will not be established which means the day of judgment the hour refers to the day of judgment the prophet used to talk about the day of judgment and the term he used was saa the hour it's another indication of how close that time is just a few moments of time away and even that day will be very long but it will be like a, a saa like an hour or like a a moment of time So the prophet made a prediction the hour will never come in other words the end of time will never come the world will not end until hatta yataqarab az-zaman until time begins to pass very very quickly 
And he said in this narration, and until the year became, becomes in its perception like a month. So a whole year passes by and it feels like just a month. And a month will feel like a week. And the week will feel like a day. A week will pass by and will feel like one day. And the day will become like one hour. So a whole year will feel like a month. A month will feel like a week. A week will feel like a day. And a day will feel like one hour. And then he said, وَتَكُونَ سَعَةً كَالْدَرْمَةِ بِالنَّارِ And the hour will feel like a flame of fire. Now, الدَّرْمَةِ بِالنَّارِ means, perhaps we in the city can appreciate that. When you have a fire, in the olden times we used to have fire to keep us warm. When you have a fire burning on some wood, and now in your campfires, you can, those of us who have gone camping can testify to that. When there is a bunch of wood on fire and you're looking at the flame, the flame is something that doesn't pause for a moment. It's constantly moving. It's in flux. It's constantly moving. And when you look at a fire that's burning on some wood, you see little sparks flying from time to time. And these sparks are, they, you know, they fly so fast. And the amount of time that it takes a spark to reach across and disappear is less than a second. It's a brief momentary fraction of time. So the Prophet said an hour will be like Kadarumati bin Nau. One hour will feel like something just, just passed so quickly you can't even quantify it. So this is the characterization of the Prophet والسلام, something that will happen at the end of time. Or when the world begins to advance and the day of judgment draws near time will begin to pass very, very quickly. Now, you have to think 1400 years ago when the Prophet ﷺ said these words, people didn't know what they meant. But they believed in the Prophet and they said, Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so if you read the books of Hadith, you'll find scholars coming up with different explanations of what this really means. Because in that time, 1400 years ago, it didn't have as much meaning as it does to us today. So at that time, some of the scholars, they said they went in a literal direction. They said maybe perhaps it means literally that time will begin to pass very quickly. Maybe the sun will start rotating quicker. Maybe there will be less than 24 hours in a day. Maybe time actually will begin to pass very quickly. And the days will be shorter and so on and so forth. Other scholars said no. This really means that maybe people will start living shorter lives. So now they live 50 years or 40 years or 60 years. Maybe they'll start living lifespans of 20 and 30 years. So generations will come and pass very quickly. And other scholars, they said perhaps Imam al-Baydawi about a thousand years ago, he said it probably refers to the frequent changing of governments. In other words, regimes and governments will change very, very quickly. So, you know, someone who's the ruler now, after a brief period of time, someone else becomes a ruler. The government changes. The whole system of life changes. So these are some of the explanations that the scholars talked about. And some of them said that it really has to do with barakah, or the blessing in time. But my brothers and sisters, today if we reflect over our lives, and the lives we live, we can appreciate the words of the Prophet because we live in these times. Every single one of us feels the crunch of time, feels the poverty of time. We feel time passing very, very quickly. So it's something we're living in now. And I think no one will disagree with that, that this prediction has come to pass. And we, le we do live in such times. If you look at the lives we live in today, look at how we're running around. Look at how there's never enough time to do anything. Look at how people don't have time for each other. Parents don't have time for their children. Families don't have time for each other. We're just in a rush all the time. There's so many things to do, so many tasks to take care of. When you go to work, there's so many things to do at, at the job. More and more pressures. So today we feel time passing very, very quickly. And you look at what passed before of your life. Look at the last Friday we were here and now we're here again. It seems like a moment of time. Look at the life that we lived. It seems like a blur. So time indeed is passing very, very quickly. But the problem, my brothers and sisters, is not time itself. 
The problem is our perception and distractions and so on and so forth. There's no blessing in time anymore. In our modern lives, there is no barakah, there is no blessing in our days, in our nights, in our time. So our relationship as human beings, it's interesting to note that our relationship with time has drastically altered. Maybe 150 years ago, we lived by natural time. So human beings, when the sun came up, we would get up. And when the sun went down, there was nothing to do. You couldn't see anything, you would go to sleep. So our whole day revolved around the natural time, around the cycles of the sun and the seasons and so on and so forth. We were in touch with nature. But then as the industrial revolution came, natural time changed to mechanical time and industrial time. So then electricity was invented Then people started staying up later and later at night. Then the sun and the moon and the night and the day became meaningless. So our work schedule began to be extended and people used to have night jobs and we would work later and later into the day. So we had natural time. Then human beings developed industrial time or mechanical time. And today we live in what we can call cyber time. Today it's totally different. It doesn't now, night and day is extremely meaningless. It has no value. Today night and day you can do whatever you want. You can go to any restaurant you want at any time of the day. 24 hours, you can go to a pharmacy, you can go to a fast food place. You can play video games all night, you can watch TV all day and all night, and people do that. So today we live in cyber time. Our lives are moving at lightning speed. Speeds of broadband speed and 4G and so on and so forth. Everything seems to be getting faster and faster. And our children, all day and all night, there's no difference. You have to force them to go to sleep. You have to force them to turn off the television or turn their devices off or stop playing the games because there's no sense of time anymore. So we're living in the midst of these times, yet the qarab al zaman. Time is passing very, very quickly. But my brothers and sisters, the point for, our, for us as believers, it's not really, the problem is not really with time. We don't blame the time, but we need to blame ourselves. It's our perception of time. Imam al-Shafi'i he said, Na'ibu zamanana wa la'ibu fina wa mali zamanina aibun siwana. He said, we blame time. We blame our age. We blame the times we live in. But the blame really is in ourselves. And we have no one to blame but ourselves. So we shouldn't blame time. You know, this is something that's a reality. There's no going back. We're living in cyber time. We're living at lightning speed. You can't change that anymore. But what we can change is our perception of time. We can't start engaging with time in a different manner. And we can't start taking steps to be more productive with our time. And that's what I wanted to look at. So although time is very fast, and some of us, we tend to look at time in a negative way, don't blame the time. Time is a great blessing, as we mentioned in the previous khutbah. The Prophet said, نِعْمَتَانْ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ السِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاغِ The Prophet said there are two blessings. Two blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we all enjoy until it's too late. And we're cheated out of those blessings, the majority of us. And that's the blessing of health and the blessing of time. So my brothers and sisters, time is short. I wanted to share in the, this portion of the khutbah some five lessons or five steps to make our lives more productive. We all feel the crunch of time. We all wish we had more hours to do this or to do that. And we all have regrets. But there are steps we can take right now. There are steps in our religion. There are five things that we can do right now so our lives can be more productive and more efficient. And we can start taking advantage of this blessing of time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Number one, my brothers and sisters, the most important thing to do, the most important thing, we, the, step, the most important step we can take to make our lives more productive is to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there's anyone that can make us more efficient, can make our productivity better, can make us take advantage of our days, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who controls everything. Wahua ala kulli shayin qadeer. He's the one who created time. He's the one who created day and night. And he's the one who controls us. He controls everything in the universe. So when you recognize that we need to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how we can be productive. More than any other step we can take 
There's a lot that's said about productivity. There are seminars people give. But more important than all of those is connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a beautiful hadith, a beautiful azkar that the Prophet gave us. Now among the sunnahs of the Prophet, he told us what to say. He told us what supplications to make. He told us how to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among his advices are supplications known as Azkar al-Sabah wa Azkar al-Masah. The Azkar of the morning time and the Azkar of the evening time. Those things that we're enjoined to, to say in the morning and at night. And if you look at these beautiful words, they teach us how to engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of them have to do with productivity. So I'll share with you one particular dua. It's a dua from Abu Malik al-Ash'ari. It's in Hisnul Mu'min, the famous dua book we all have. It's the dua that we're supposed to make when we wake up in the morning. And when you look at that, you realize, you know, this dua, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you wake up in the morning, every believer should say this. Asbahna wa asbaha al-mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma inni as'alak khayra hadha al-yawm. Fathahu wa nasrahu wa nurahu wa barakatah wa hudah. Wa a'udhu bika min sharri, min, min sharri ma fihi wa sharri ma ba'da. It's a beautiful supplication. Asbahna wa asbaha al-mulku lillah. When you wake up in the morning, let the first thing you say, this is the advice of the Prophet, let the first words coming out of your mouth be this. Asbahna, we woke up. We woke up, we're here. Wa asbaha al-mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. And, and the whole kingdom, the entire universe has also woken up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds. Asbahna wa asbaha al-mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. And then the Prophet said to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra hadha al-yawm. First words in the morning, O oh Allah, give us the best of this day. So you're looking forward for the day. This is about productivity. These are the first words coming out of your mouth. You're still on your bed. You just woke up. You're saying, Asbahna. You're saying, Asbahna. We woke up. And the entire kingdom as well. For the sake of Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And then you make a supplication. O oh Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra hadha al-yawm. O oh Allah, I ask you for the good that's contained in this day that I'm about to embark in, this day that's before me. Fathahu wa nasrahu wa nurahu wa barakatahu wa huda. Such beautiful words. I ask you for the good of this day, its conquests, its victories, its blessings, its guidance, its light. Everything good that can happen during the day, you're asking Allah for that. Any good, any opening, any conquest, any victory, any light, any type of guidance, any type of good, that possibly can happen this day, O oh Allah, give it to me. That's what you're asking. And then you add, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا فِيهِ وَشَرِّ مَا بَعْدَ And O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil that can possibly happen on this day and the evil that can happen possibly after this day. So such beautiful words. If we understood these words and if we really utilized them, we said these in the morning with our hearts, understanding their meaning, our lives would change. Our days would change. We would get barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, the most important factor in living productive lives, in taking advantage of our time, is to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many, many ways, among them this beautiful supplication, supplication that the Prophet enjoined we all make in the morning. And among them, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he used to make dua for productivity. He used to make dua to make himself efficient. So there's one particular supplication he used to make. He would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajazi wal kasal. Let's pause for a moment on these words of the Prophet ﷺ. He would seek refuge in Allah. He said, oh Allah, protect me or protect me from two things. And these two things are what kill our time and productivity. Min al-ajazi wal kasal. So the Prophet said, protect us. Or I seek refuge in Allah from laziness and from incapacity. These are the two greatest destroyers of productivity. Number one is kasal, which is laziness, which is when you just become lethargic and you don't take advantage of time, you tend to procrastinate and you tend to put things off. This is a huge problem for us. All of us suffer from that to various degrees. It's a huge problem. 
We want to do something, but we just don't do it. We become lazy. We become lethargic. We just wind up watching TV or doing something like that. So the Prophet ﷺ, he asked Allah you know, to protect himself from that. If that's the Prophet, what about us brothers and sisters? So we should make this dua as well. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasal. May Allah protect us from laziness and procrastination. The second thing that the Prophet asks refuge from is ajaz. Ajaz in Arabic is the ability or the inability to do something. The lack of ability to do anything. So one thing is laziness, which is a degree less than that. Laziness where you tend to put things off and you just don't do things and you do them later. But ajaz is the inability to do something. Where you just can't do something. You, 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 you make obstacles in front of you that don't really exist. So you say, you know what, I can never learn Arabic. I can never recite Quran. And maybe only a shaykh can do that. So you make yourself ajaz, incapacitated, handicapped. And you never get to that task. So these are two of the greatest destroyers of productivity. The greatest obstacles of productivity in our lives. Laziness and incapacity or, hand, or being handicapped. And the Prophet himself, he sought refuge from that. So what about us brothers and sisters? We need to connect with Allah even more than the Prophet We're in greater need than he was. So we need to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again in our lives. And that's the greatest and more than any effort we can take on our own is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning to Him to ask for guidance, to ask for barakah, and to ask for productivity in our lives. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولا. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. So we're looking at time management from an Islamic perspective. And we began by appreciating the type of times we live in where things are going so fast. And it was a prediction from our Prophet والسلام, that there will come a time when يَتَقَارَبَ zaman Time will begin to pass very, very quickly. And the point we're trying to raise is that the problem not really, is not really with time. It's with us. It's our approach to our lives. It's our approach to time itself. And we mentioned last week, Hassan al-Basri, the great Imam, he said, Yabna Adam, innama anta ayyam. Kullama dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'du. He said, O oh, son of Adam, you're just a bunch of days. Your life is just a bunch of days. Just a few days, you can count them. At the end of your life, you can see how many days you were here. Every time one day passes, a part of you is gone forever. So we should realize that the time is short. Time is passing quickly in our time, in, in, especially in our era. But we need to take advantage of that. And at the end of the day, that's all we have. It's all we have. We have a bunch of days on this earth. And our future for all eternity will be determined by the time we spend in this earth. However limited that was. So some of the lessons, some of the ways we can take advantage of our time. Number one was connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, connecting with the purpose of our lives. The purpose of our lives is very obvious. We all know is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah created us for one thing and one thing only. Not to enjoy things, not to have pleasure and so on. So although we can enjoy things, but the real purpose of our life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah created us. So the more we're connected with that purpose, the more productive we are going to be. And the more we're engaged in activities that are not facilitating that purpose of our life, the more we're going to waste our time away. If you look at as-salah, the obligation of the prayers, the five daily prayers, and you look at the wisdom behind them, how Allah designed five times a day we're connecting with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The salah, wallahi brothers and sisters, is an exercise in time management. It's worshipping Allah, but it's an exercise in time management. 
It's at fixed times throughout the day. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta. The salah is on the believers at fixed intervals. And if you look at how the prayers are situated, the first thing we do in the day is salah, fajr, at the time before the sun even comes out. And the last thing we do at Isha time, or are supposed to do at Isha time, is the prayer. So our life begins, our day begins with prayer, ends with prayer, and throughout the day we have prayer. And if you look at the wisdom of the timings, this is really what it's about, to get our life in order, to connect with our purpose of life. You know, nowadays, because of the time we live in, our life doesn't begin with Fajr. But the way it was designed, we were getting up, right before sunrise, you make Salat al-Fajr. And then the sun comes out, and then you engage in the rest of your activities. Then after a period of time, Salat al-Dhuhr. Then after a period of time, in the middle of the day, perhaps the busiest portion of the day, Salat al-Asr. And this is a time where it's very difficult to make Salat al-Asr. All of us who work know that. Probably the most difficult prayer for us is Asr prayer. <clears throat> because Fajr, we're at home. Isha, we can come home and pray. Maghrib is towards the end of the day, so generally we have time to pray that. And for many of us, Dhuhr is in the beginning of the workday, we can still make time. But Asr is in the middle of the workday. It's very difficult to pray Asr. And there's a short period of time you have to pray it. That's why Allah says, Hafidhu ala salat. Hafidhu ala salawati wa salatil wuspa. The Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He singled out Asr prayer for this reason. He said, Hafidhu ala salawati wa salatil wusta. Guard your prayers, especially the middle prayer, salatil wusta. And the Mufassirin, they say the middle prayer is Asr prayer. It's right in the middle of the day. And the reason Allah singled it out because this is smack in the middle of your activities. So you're supposed to take time out, no matter how, much t- how busy you are, we take time out to pray. And then Aisha prayer was at the end of the day, and the sunnah is not to talk after Aisha prayer. What does that mean? Is it haram to talk? No. What it meant was, the last thing for believers, ideally was Aisha prayer. Your day began with Fajr prayer, and then the last thing of the night is the Aisha prayer, and after that, you go to bed. There's no reason to do anything else. So our whole lives were designed to revolve around prayer. And that's the purpose of our life, my brothers and sisters, connecting with Allah and connecting with our ibadah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, we need to feel the urgency of matters. We need to feel the urgency of time and really push ourselves. In Arabic, it's called al-mubadara. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Badiru bil a'mal. He would always advise his companions, he would use these ter- this terminology, Badiru bil a'mal, which means, hurry up and do good deeds. Hurry up and do things. So when the Prophet talked to his companions, he counseled his companions, and the Quran also, the language being used is hurry, rush, race, because time is running out. In the Quran, سَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ سَابِقُوا the Qur'an uses the same terminology, terminology of rushing, of racing. This is the terminology of competitions, of marathon. When you run a marathon, this is the terminology you use. Race, rush, you know, compete with one another. This is the terminology used in the Qur'an and the Sunnah when it comes to good deeds. And the lesson for us is don't waste time. Don't procrastinate. Hurry up and do things. Don't put them off. Don't waste time. Don't procrastinate. Don't be lazy. But badiru bil a'mal. Hurry up and do things. When it comes to the dunya, our worldly affairs, the Quran has a lot to say about that. But it says, kulu washrabu. It says, wamshu fi manakibiha. Allah says, eat and drink. Allah never says, hurry up and eat and drink. Hurry up and, and gain wealth. When Allah talks about worldly affairs, He uses the language of walking, the language of doing. But when He talks about akhirah, when He talks about good deeds, those things that have to do with our purpose, the language is competition. Hurry up, race, and rush. So there's a verse in the Quran, Allah says He subjected the entire earth to the believers. And then He gave us permission to use the resources of the earth. We're not here to live in caves. We're allowed to use the resources. But the word He used, فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Walk in the paths of the earth. He didn't say run. He said walk in the paths of the earth. Yani in the earth, 
the resources, your work, your livelihood, building your homes, nothing wrong with enjoying that. But Allah says, walk and enjoy that. When it comes to Akhirah, Allah says, Sari, or rush and run. In one place you're running, in the other place you're supposed to be walking. So my brothers and sisters, that's a lesson in productivity. When it comes to our purpose of life, we need to rush. We need to raise the bar and push ourselves harder. Number four, my brothers and sisters, one of the most important, one of the biggest distractions or biggest destroyers of productivity in our lives are distractions, those things that are trivial matters. And the, the tragedy of our time that we as, as, as human beings are involved more and more in trivial pursuits, in things that don't really benefit us. Some of us don't really harm us, but they don't really benefit us. So an example would be like sports. You know, we had the Super Bowl last week. We had the football match in Egypt a few weeks ago. Look at how many hours we waste. Look at how many hours we waste. There's nothing haram. I didn't make a judgment on that. I'm not saying don't watch that, don't engage in sports. But look at the hours you spend watching a football game. Compare that to the hour and ask yourself an honest question. Compare the hours you're spending watching football. How many hours or how many minutes are you spending reciting Quran? If there's no comparison, something is wrong with your life. I'm not saying it's haram. Don't get me wrong. But if that's all you're doing and you're spending hours of your life in these trivial matters, and you're not spending an equal amount of time or more time in the matters that matter, then really there's something wrong with your life and your life can never be productive. So today we spend so much time in these trivial matters. It's estimated in the United States, 99% of people have a television in their house. You know, and these are old statistics. Now television is meaningless. Now you have devices where you can watch anything you want and see anything you want. But the statistics, 99% of homes have a television. The average person in America at the end of his life has spent a total of 13 years. 13 years watching television. Three and a half years watching commercials. These are the statistics. You know, the average, if you count up the amount of time that children spend watching TV and so, and so forth, at the end of your life, you can tally that. 13 years watching television. And we ask ourselves why our lives aren't productive. So today, the distractions are more than ever before. But we need to minimize these distractions. We need to engage our lives in those things that matter and try to stay away from those things that... Obviously, we stay away from those things that harm us. We have no choice. If something is haram, you're supposed to stay away. You can't even engage it for a moment. But we're talking about those things that aren't haram. There aren't, you know, you're not sinful for doing them. But engaging in them excessively takes you away from other things. And lastly, my brothers and sisters, the last thing, the last advice in terms of productivity would be that sometimes we need alone time. I know that sounds a little childish, but sometimes we need to turn things off and have time to ourselves and time to reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just time where the, the television is off, your telephone is off, and all of these things are not distracting you. You know, nowadays people are on their devices 24-7, children are on Facebook and Twitter and playing video games at all times of the day and night. Sometimes you need to turn all those things off. You know, last week in Newsweek, there was an interesting issue. Newsweek or Time, one of the magazines, the headline or the issue was about how to be smarter. Some ways to make yourself smarter. And the whole issue was about medical or scientific research that shows how our lives can be more productive and we can be smarter and more intelligent. Previously we thought, you know, a person, their intelligence was fixed at birth. Now research shows that, you know, we can change those things. We can get smarter and more intellectual and more cognitive as time goes based on certain things. But one of those advices that I don't forget, they said that we need time where you need to turn off all your technology. This is last week's Time or Newsweek magazine. You need to turn off your devices. Those people who do that are generally are smarter than those people who are constantly distracted by these devices. So they, just, they suggested there's an app. You can actually download an app that turns off the internet on your phone. So even they have an app, they use technology to turn off technology. There's an app called Freedom, I believe, where for a brief moment of time, you take an hour, you know, this hour I need to read or do something with my life. You turn it on and all those Facebook and all these things get turned off and all the notices get turned off. 
My brothers and sisters, this is advice from the Quran and Sunnah. This is advice we need to be still. We need to be calm. We need to have alone time. There are so many verses, so many instructions of the Prophet If you look at the life of the Prophet, look at the seerah, and that's the last thing I'll say. Just visualize the life of the Prophet. The books of hadith are filled with his sermons, his teaching, his advice to his companions. And there are beautiful pictures of how he was walking, how he was talking, what happened. Read those stories and visualize how life was. When you read the seerah and the hadith, you realize the Prophet ﷺ wasn't a man who was running around, constantly distracted. And the companions weren't people running from place to place. There were people who were tranquil. They had plenty of time. They were sitting, they were worshipping, they were praying for long periods of time. When you read some of the hadith, it says, you know, they describe the sermons of the Prophet. The Prophet is teaching his companions. The companions are sitting before him like here today. What are the descriptions? Read the descriptions. I want you to look behind the words. Some of the descriptions, for instance, كَأَنَّ عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمُ الطَّيْرِ The companions are sitting listening to the Prophet as if birds are perched on their heads. What does that mean? They're still, they're not moving, they're not fidgeting, they're not, they don't have devices, they're not like talking to someone, doing something at the same time. They were so still that the birds would come and land on them. They would be standing like they were pillars in the masjid. That's how calm they were. That's how silent they were. That's how, you know, they weren't, you know, destroyed by these constant distractions. The Prophet ﷺ, he described, Imam Al-Qurtubi, he describes the Prophet in some beautiful words. كَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَثِيرُ الصَّمْتِ The Prophet ﷺ, he was كَثِيرُ الصَّمْتِ He was excessively silent. He wasn't a person who talked all the time. But predominantly he was quiet. And when he needed to talk, he talked and people listened. But this is the description of the Prophet. He was quiet. وَالْوَقَارِ And he had tranquility about him. طَوِيلُ الْأَطْرَاقِ وَالْإِعْتِبَارِ تَكْسُ هَيْبَةَ وَقَارِهِ جَلُسَائِهِ That he was so calm, he was so quiet, he was so dignified, he wasn't constantly fidgeting and moving. That all the people around him, they would do the same thing. They would come to Medina, it would be silence. And they would have time to think and to reflect. And he said, إِذَا جَلَسُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ كَانَ عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمُ الطَّيْرِ إِعْضَامًا لَهُ وَهَيْبَةً مِنْ That when the companions, his companions would sit around him, they were so tranquil, it was as if birds were coming. And sometimes when they were praying, birds would actually come, land on their shoulders, out of their stillness. So my brothers and sisters, we all need alone time. We all need time to ourselves. Sometimes you need to turn everything off. And nowadays, the only alone time most of us have is when we're commuting to work. You know, the 30 minutes we have driving to work, 40 minutes or one hour, whatever time we have. That's probably the only time we have where we're not distracted. But even now we have radio and you have XM and you have all these distractions. But take advantage of that time. Those of us who are traveling, I know so many people that memorize Quran in their commutes, only on the time they were commuting. Turn that radio off. Get some time to yourself. If you don't commute, make some time. Spend an hour a day where you're, distract, you're not distracted. Turn everything off. Tell people, you know, this is my hour. Sit down and reflect over things. Tafakkaru. Reflect over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah. Make salah. But without distractions. We all need to do that. I'll end with the word, some words from Imam As-Sana'ani, a, a great scholar, who was a prolific scholar from Yemen, who spent so much of his time... Um, writing so many books, there's hundreds of books that he wrote. Rahimahullah ta'ala, and he left a legacy of knowledge. He used to say, and he was a poet as well, he said, Ta'imtu halawat al ashya'i tarran, fala shay'un aladha min as sukuti, wa khayru majalis al dunya jami'an, majalis al dafatiri fil buyuti. He said for him, he said he traveled far and wide, and he experienced many things. He tasted many things that were very ta uh, beautiful and enjoyable. But he said the most enjoyable of all the things he ever, in, ever experienced or tasted is silence. The alone time, being alone. And he said better than all the majalis, all the meetings and gatherings of the world, he said is more beloved to him than sitting anywhere in the world in any gathering, any meeting, is sitting alone at home with his books. So my brothers and sisters, these were the people who were productive. 
These were the people who left a legacy. Imagine writing 400 books as Imam al-Sana'ani did. You know, most of us don't even read 400 books. Imagine writing 400 books. These were the people who were productive and this is why they were productive. So my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all productive, make us among those who utilize our time properly, make us all among those who don't waste our lives away. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'a. والباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين اللهم اصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة عمرنا واصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا واصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نحمد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله My brothers and sisters, a reminder as I announced last week there's a sisters class class just for sisters uh, in a few minutes after the sun up in the back it's going to be from 30 to 45 minutes we have one brother in the United States, Shahada, uh, uh, all brothers who are going to the front. Tomorrow, there's a code ride, a winter code ride um, in General Square by the fountain. The sister, there's some flyers out here, the sister is collecting winter jackets, and they're being distributed to those in need. For those who want to come tomorrow at 12 o'clock in the General Square area, the fountain area, um, they had a similar drive when they gave up. So Brother B. Gregory here wants to join our family and I was speaking to him before the prayer and Brother Gregory brought him here. Been looking at the Psalm for the last two months or so and the thing that impressed him the most was the brotherhood of and the unity and how nice uh, all the believers are to each other. So he's going to take a shahada and testimony of faith in front of all of us and we're going to welcome him to the family. So repeat after me, we'll say this in our way. Ashadu, Allah, Allah, Jidaha, Allah, Illallah, Illallah. Wa, Wa, Ashadu, Ashadu, Anna,